Welcome to UW's Sounds of the World, a sampler of films from the Robert Garfius Collection in the University of Washington Ethnomusicology Archives. I'm Laurel Sercombe. During the 1960s and 70s, Dr. Garfius filmed hundreds of musicians during field trips abroad, as well as right here on campus. Today, we're going to see performances of folk and classical music of Afghanistan. My guest is ethnomusicologist Hiromi Lorraine Sakata, scholar of Afghan music, whose research in that country goes back to her first field trip in 1966. Welcome, Dr. Sakata. Thank you. Would you give us a brief introduction to the music of Afghanistan? Many uh, people describe Afghanistan as uh, the crossroads of Asia. And as such, I think the musical culture reflects a um, mixture of regional styles from Afghanistan and, and its neighbors. Amongst the various regional styles, there is one instrument, the rabab, that many Afghans hold a special place for in their hearts because they feel it is their national instrument. Mm -hmm. The rabab is, um, has deep roots in the folk uh, lore of the Pashtuns who live in southern and uh, southeastern Afghanistan as well as across the border in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But in the hands of a few expert virtuosic performers, they have raised the level of a folk instrument to the level of a uh, national instrument. And um, so it is possible to play uh, solo, instrument, solo classical instrumental music. Um, the rabab is a short neck plucked lute and it has a very deep body. It's um, carved out of a single block of wood, of mulberry wood, and has three plain strings and about 12 to 16 sympathetic strings. Um, and the bottom part, the lower body, is covered with membrane, which gives it it's a particular sound which is deep and resonant and I think epitomizes the sound of Afghan music. Mm. Well, tell us a little bit about your teacher, Muhammad Omar. Uh, Muhammad Omar, Ustad Muhammad Omar, was a renowned uh, rabab virtuoso. And uh, at the time I met him, it was, uh, I met him first in Kabul in 1967 when I expressed a desire to take music lessons from an Afghan musician and to my great surprise he accepted me as his student as his first foreign student and female student mm. and at that time he was a director of um, the Afghan National Orchestra of Radio Afghanistan and in 1974 he uh, was the first Afghan musician to teach at an American, at a major American university. And that university, of course, was uh, the University of Washington. Let's hear Mohammed Omar now in a performance of a folk song filmed by Robert Garfius at the University of Washington in 1974. In this performance, uh, Mohammed Omar introduces the song by improvising on its melody in the classical style. Thank you. 
Next, we're going to see performances by two outstanding young Afghan musicians who are carrying on the tradition of Muhammad Omar and bringing their own contemporary approach to the music. Would you introduce us to these musicians? Um, Humayun Sahi was born and raised in Kabul, and his father, Ghulam Sahi, was a student and brother-in-law of Ustad Muhammad Omar, mm -hmm. and passed on to his son, Humayun, the musical heritage that linked directly back to the origins of Afghan classical music. Mm -hmm. Today, Humayun is really the uh, thought of as the finest and most innovative uh, Rabab artist of his generation. Salar Nader was born in uh, Hamburg, Germany to parents who were forced to flee Afghanistan during the uh, Soviet-Afghan War. Mm. When Salar was five, he and his family moved to California and just two years after that he started taking tabla lessons from the great Zakir Hussein. And today, uh, he's considered one of Zakir's uh, brightest protégés, and he has a full performing career of his own. Hmm. Here are Homayun Saki and Salar Nadar in a concert performance of a folk song from Katagan, recorded at the University of Washington in April 2012. Thank you. 
Dr. Sakata, would you tell us about the next performance? Uh, Humayun Sahi and Salar Nader performed the Raga Puriya Kalyan in a classical uh, Afghan style. Because of time constraints, we've had to bridge short excerpts representing the introduction and uh, the improvisation sections in free rhythm, and uh, also the developmental sections of the raga in fixed rhythm, which lead up to the climax at the end. And here you'll have ample opportunity to, to view Humayun's innovative techniques that, that uh, give him a chance to expand the range of the raga, of the uh, rabab, as well as play uh, beautiful glissandi passages that are quick as lightning and as smooth as silk. And this is really a remarkable performance. Here are Hamayun Saki and Salar Nader in portions of Raga Purya Kalyan from the same concert recorded at the University of Washington in April 2012.
Dr. Sakata, thanks for joining me today to talk about and share the music of Mohammed Omar, Homayun Saki, and Salar Nader. Thanks to Robert Garfius for the film footage of Mohammed Omar, and to Homayun Saki and Salar Nader, and the University of Washington Ethnomusicology Archives for permission to share the video recording of their 2012 concert. I'm Laurel Circum, and this is UW Sounds of the World. <laughs>